Hey, what's up? This is Reed. There are many misconceptions with privacy in the smart home, but by the end of this video, you'll feel more confident as I share tips on how to make your home more secure. Or you just might want to pull the plug on all your smart devices and live in a bunker. We'll see. I'll also show you what happened when I monitored the amount of data uploaded by my Echo to see if it's recording 24-7. Many people see a smart speaker like this and think it's a device designed to infiltrate our homes and spy on us, which is a valid concern. Amazon, Apple, Google, they all claim that these smart speakers only record and upload audio if you say the wake word. So the device is always listening for that word, but not always recording. But sometimes when I'm having a conversation with my wife, it can still get accidentally triggered. When this happens, the speaker is recording everything you're saying and uploading it to their servers. To help it not get triggered too easily, you can change the trigger word on the Echo devices, and on Google Home, you can adjust the wake word sensitivity. You can also delete what you just said with a voice command, or delete voice recording history in the app. While you're in there, you may want to tighten security in other ways. By having your history auto-delete more often, also, I wouldn't recommend giving Amazon permission to use your recordings for improvements. In our house, we treat the wake word of the voice assistants like the name of Lord Voldemort. And there are some other trigger words we don't say in this house like cookie. cookie, cookie, cookie. Oh, great. Look what you made me say. There are still plenty of people that say, I don't trust these things and I think that they're recording everything. What's interesting is that I use Wireshark, which analyzes network traffic on this Echo Dot, and it wasn't uploading that many packets until I spoke to it. Which of course isn't a scientific test because it's encrypted and we don't know what it's really sending, but it could be a little reassuring to know that it's not sending a lot of data when you're not talking to it. That doesn't mean you have to trust the smart speaker blindly or that they're not annoying, but I wouldn't say that they're spying on you. But what about other smart devices in your house? Can they spy on you? To keep things simple, I'm gonna separate spying into two categories. One is a company using your data to improve their services or sell it to advertisers. The second is for malicious intent. Let's talk about the first one because I hear concerns about this often. Sometimes people say, I don't want the smart light company to know when I turn my lights on and off. I want privacy in my house but they might not realize there could be bigger culprits in their house already. Social media, Gmail, your internet service provider, Google, and even credit cards. Companies selling and using all of that personal data is a little more concerning to me than when my lights are turning on, but there is a way to keep your smart home more private. Many people use smart home systems that run completely locally and away from the cloud, like Home Assistant. That way, they are in control of their data. Now let's talk about that second category, devices being used maliciously. This is when someone is trying to watch you or listen to you when they shouldn't, or trying to gain access to your computer for personal information. When you connect a device to the internet, it's also creating another pathway for someone to potentially access your network. So that inexpensive smart light bulb from a foreign country, is it dangerous? Well, maybe. See, most big smart home companies spend a lot of time and money securing their devices so they don't get hacked. Because if they do, they would lose a lot of money or go out of business. But cheap, insecure smart home devices might have some vulnerabilities that are easy to compromise. What surprises some people is that it's not just smart home tech. It's anything that's on your network, like your smart TV or an old printer. That does not mean popular name brand smart home devices are immune to this happening, as we've seen in the news. But many times it's related to insecure passwords that have been hacked somewhere else online. You should really use strong passwords that are unique for each app and website. There are also more advanced solutions that you can implement like VLANs. They'll help separate your insecure smart light bulb from accessing your computer. And I'll talk more about that in another video. If you want to use cameras inside, there is something you can do to make them a little more secure. Connect them to a smart outlet and set up an automation to kill power to them when you're home. That adds a level of privacy. If you're still not convinced and worried that the government is using your smart home devices to spy on you, let's talk about that. First, do you think the government would want to use a microphone on a smart device across the room that could be picking up anyone in between, 
or a microphone that's almost always next to the person for cleaner audio. You tell me. Not to scare you, but Edward Snowden did say that the NSA can tap into any phone at any time and listen to that microphone. Hey, what's up guys? Most likely you've told the government all they want to know using social media and Google searches anyways. Oh, and Snowden also said even if the government doesn't use all of that data collected for malicious intent, if another government took over, they could. But I think at that point we would have bigger problems. All right, this is all very concerning, but how worried should you be? On a scale from I don't really care to I'm microwaving my hard drives every time I use the internet, maybe somewhere in the middle where you're not paranoid, but you're also concerned with security, implementing the things that we talked about. If you're like, hey, I care about privacy and there is no way I'm getting an echo or connecting smart devices to the cloud, and you're typing that into a YouTube comment right now, well, I hate to say it, but it's too late for you. Google owns YouTube, and now they own you apparently as well. This is only scratching the surface on a very complicated issue. The way I view it is, there will always be trade-offs and risks when you're using smart home devices for convenience. This also applies to smartphones, social media, and anything Google really. But if you found this video helpful, please share it with someone concerned about smart home privacy. Thanks for watching, we'll see you again next time. Hmm, I wonder what she wants for Mother's Day. I heard she wants a necklace. Oh, she must have been adding that to her Amazon shopping list. No, I heard her say it in the shower. Wait, what? Anytime someone talks about shopping, I conveniently hear my wake word. That's it. I'm going to go tell her. If you do, I will tell her you are never listening. Fine. Okay, you can keep listening, but fill me in on the things that I don't hear. Negligent spouse mode activated.